Today is National Beer Day. And no, it's not just some random day they chose on the calendar. April 7th marks the day that the Colin Harrison Act was enacted by President Franklin D. Roosevelt on March 22nd of 1933. The Colin Harrison Act didn't end prohibition, but it did legalize the sale of low alcohol beer and wine, putting the country a step in the right direction. So, how did American breweries survive during those 13 years of no alcohol allowed? Well, here's your five to know on how five American breweries pivoted and survived prohibition. Anheuser-Busch went the near beer route with a beverage called Bevo. The cereal beverage was so popular that it actually became a cultural icon of that time. Coors started a ceramics and porcelain business, believe it or not. They took advantage of clay deposits near the brewery in Golden, Colorado. And fun fact, Coors Tech, as it's called today, is still alive and well. Uh, Miller Brewing almost didn't make it. Like Anheuser-Busch, Miller went the near beer route too, but people really weren't a fan of this one. This unfortunately landed the Miller family in a tough spot of having to put the brewery up for sale in 1925, but good for them, no one bought it. And fast forward to 1933, the brewery returned to life again. Gotta love Wisconsin. Pabst switched from making beer to making cheese. The brewery's ice cellars were perfect to craft cheese in. They kept this up and then Pabst sold their cheese making business to Kraft in 1933 at the end of Prohibition. And finally, Yingling. DG Yingling and Son, much like Pabst, opened a dairy business across the street from its brewery and began the production of ice cream. Here's your five to know on how five major American breweries survived Prohibition. I'm your host and producer, Nakarana. See you later.